Hello and um, welcome to another tutorial by Mike Jackson, that's me, eponymously, and I'm, today I'm going to be painting a picture of uh, Cricket St Thomas which is in Somerset. It's an old, uh, old building, like a, an old mansion, manor house, whatever, and it was used in uh, Tenor Manor Barn. But anyway, this is just the back end of it, and the pi the the picture of it, the picture I took of it, is quite a boring picture. Really, it's very dark and very high contrast, and I don't want that. I want to try and create a little bit of mood to this picture, so I'm gonna alter it quite a lot, really. Uh, just put a little bit of tape over the top there, stop it from. Buckling. I'm using um, Saunders 425 GSM, so it's really heavy. It's rough as well. I shall be using this is the brush I shall be using to wet the whole scene with first. It is a an a Skoda Ultimo, so size six, 18. It's uh, the Alvaro Castanet range. I'll be using that. I'll probably, or more than likely, will be using my Escoda size 12 Perla Synthetico. And I'll use another couple of brushes just to uh, to do a bit of extra detailing. But here's my palette. It's the same as I normally use. I'll put my uh, colours that I use down at the bottom of the screen for you to make a note of. So firstly I'm going to just wet the whole of this scene. I'll move my palette over there a little bit while I do this. Wet the whole scene uh, because I want to create like a misty effect, like a very early morning um, effect where some of these people are going out for a, an early morning walk before their, their luxury breakfast very nice so in order to do that I want to take away this brightness from the sky and I'm gonna but I want to contrast I want a point of interest a highlighting point so I'm gonna just this area here I'm gonna create that the point of interest and it's within the golden the golden rule so it's just under two-thirds there and just around about a third upwards there anyway so so I'm going to grey a lot of this this out at the top so for that I'm just going to wet the area put a little bit of I had a bit of uh, purple there before I'm going to utilize that and put a bit of that in there a bit of Payne's grey and a little bit of French um, yeah French ultramarine but a bit more purple, paint grey, and I think I'll do that. I'll, I want to try and make it like a warm grey colour. So let's see that. That's quite nice. It spilled a little bit there, but that's all right now. So I'm going to try and put this over most of this picture. Now I'm going to. I'll just. This is just a, we're well, just experimenting here really now. A little bit there, a little bit there. And I've just added a little bit of yellow to that. And it, it don't look too bad. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange to this now to warm it up a little bit more down there. And I'm not being too, too precious about this. It's all going to blend in. And I don't want any really light parts in the sky, but I'm leaving this area very, very light because that is where the contrast is going to be most. So we're going to have darks and lights, and it's going to draw your eye to that area. So I'll add a little bit more grey to here now. It's getting a bit too bit too colourful, I don't really want that, 
at this stage. Now, along here, I'm going to leave that part there. It all starts to blend in a little bit, but that part is going to be a little bit lighter than most. Right. Now then, I've got my picture at an angle of about 15 degrees, probably about 10 degrees actually, 5 10 degrees. So it's gently running down, gently running down. Uh, normally, I would give it an old shimmy shimmy shake, but I just want this to run down and paint itself here at the back. So I'm going to squeeze that brush out, put it to one side. And I think we'll just wait until that dries now. Come back in a bit. Okay, so I've allowed that to dry. I've actually used a hair dryer on it, but because uh, I'm not really bothered about maintaining those um, little divots and uh, granular areas, I think the the the, the paint it will it will get its own granular areas as we develop this painting. So in the background here. Uh, I want to create some really, really distant um, hills. So I'm gonna. I'm using the same mixture that I used for for this area. I'm just gonna test it out first on a bit of dry area. Now that's gonna dry much lighter, but I still think it's a bit too dark. So I'm gonna just add a bit of water to this part here. I think that might be right there. Okay, so I'm just using this area just to create some very, very far distant um, points of interest, some hills. Now, if I wanted to create some um, trees there, what I would do is I would just, I would just dampen that. I will do some here. Let's just dampen that area first, yeah. And now I put. We want it to to fade into that. And blend into that and lose those edges. I should have wet it a little bit more so but if you if you do make that mistake and not doing it you can just add a little bit of water to the tops there. Just to the top of those points of interest, that's the trees and just just break it up a little bit by lifting out a little bit of paint just breaking that up a little bit where to contrast to that this is quite sharp here but we've got to lift a bit of this paint out here now I'm going to let that dry and have a look at the top of this here so I want this to be only just appearing at the top because it's quite a misty morning so for the top part here I'm just gonna just in a couple of areas just have a little bit of paint. Now the the painting, uh, the picture that I, uh, I'm actually working from, it's very dark at the top, but uh, I think a good artist should be able to use their imagination. So we're just using our knowledge of, of things in the past, paintings that we've done in the past, bring them through. And I think I'll just add a little bit more colour to this part here now. So we're just alternating it so that it could have a little bit of mist there and it's lost it there and whatever. And because it's getting further back, I just want just a little smidge of colour here. We can always add it later on, but we're just going to put a smidge of it there. So it's, it's only just showing up. Now I'm going to throw a bit of stronger colour into here. All the way down. All the way down here. See there? And we, we've got a little zigzag crisscrosses. Nothing too, nothing too taxing. And now I'm going to add a little bit of extra colour here. I'm going to add a little bit of to this part here, a little bit of orange with those, a bit of purple it was, and just drop a little bit in there, only a little bit, 
because we're going to pull it down and as we go down we're adding bits of colour and points of interest there we go down there and as we go we just leave the top of that that roof obviously if it's uh, if it's joined up that's okay we can always live with that there we go there we are there and I think you know I think we'll have a little bit of a, a cool colour here now we'll add a bit of that to there and we'll have a bit of cool colour there and all we're doing is we're just bringing stuff down and adding bits of colouring and different st strengths and it's creating a little bit of atmosphere now just leave the top of there off a bit now we're going to lose that with a bit of cool colour lose that just push it away from there a little bit okay now as we get further down to here down to the, the bottom of it here it needs to it needs to darken so let's add a little bit of this cool color and a little bit of this dark color so as we go further down further down to these bushes here our sticks got there we're just going to darken it up and this is where that contrasting area is that contrasting bit I don't want to lose that light there, so washing it out a little bit. Yeah, and I'll bring that over here. There we go. It just creates a little bit of interest, and people say, Oh, what's going on there? Oh, that's interesting. There might be some bushes there. There might be a uh, a couple of flowers or plants that are casting a shadow there. All sorts of things could be happening. So now on this part here, I'm going to come down to these characters. But I'm going to use a little bit of greenery here. A little bit of greenery. So let's just grab a bit of this, that green there, which is a little bit on the yellow side. So add a bit of that one to it as well. And a little bit of that one. Let's let's get down here. And if it runs into there, it doesn't matter. All we're doing is we're just creating an area around here. Which is going to shape our little characters here. We're just shaping our characters. Easy peasy. Lemon. Blinking, squeezy. There you go. So there's the head, there's the body. We're just shaping those characters. There's another one, she's with a partner there. And you know, I think I'm going to put so just a little bit of down here. Okay. And I think we'll add a little bit of this. Upper rows on there, just to just to break that colour up. There we go. I want a little bit down there as well. There you go. And now we're getting a little bit of interest. And all I'm doing is I'm using this colour. Just to contrast the other colours. Just add a little bit of dark under there, some little bit of paint grey under there. Okay, that area, just over there. Right, now while that's drying, 
or think about these trees in the, in, in the, just that area. Slurp me, me talk. Right, same part here, but we're going to warm this up a little bit with a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay. Let me brush it side out. Oh, no, no, the bunny place. Burnt sienna in here. Let's just see how they go first. See. There's some people down there, but I'm going to put those in as like silhouettes. Just careful up to that line. These are warmer, warmer trees. So we'll just allow for that. Don't matter if you go over it, because it's going to go in with a darker colour. In fact, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go over with a darker colour anyway. Right, now then, I'm going to add just in certain areas a little bit of green there. Only in bits, so we're not making them into big green trees. We're just indicating. I'll make a, we're indicating that these are actually trees and we have got a little bit of green light on the area. See that's all we're doing, just using these two colours. Look at that green, oh let's put a bit of a, a bit of cooler colour there as well as we're going further out, further out. Let's go out of the picture, it's always a good idea to use a, some cooler colours and it draws your eye into, into the warmth. Boom, 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 boom. Let's add a little bit of um, French ultramarine there. Eh? I've just cooled that grey right the way down and I'm quite pleased with that. See that now oh, that's swelling up there. It's done its work. I'm using a thirsty brush and just with the tip just drink it up, I squeeze it out. Drink it up. Squeeze it out, hey up. Don't want to do that, did we? Here we go. And the same over here. Once it's done its job, we can do that. That's done its job. And that's done its job. Yeah, we're saying we don't need you to do any more work for us. Lovely Mr. Bead. You've done your job for us. Right, now let's let, let that dry for a while. Right, so this is, uh, it's, it's drying up nicely actually. But these just these little areas on the bottom is just a little bit damp. So, I'm going to use that to my advantage and I'm going to put a little bit of dark colour at the bottom. So I'm using a bit of, a little bit of the Payne's Grey. I want to maintain that coolness and a little bit of this purple. And I'm just going to drop these little colours at the bottom there. So they will just feather up nicely. And it gives an impression of, of folding under those trees there. And we've got a little bit of green that we can put in this part here. And I'm using the tongue wisely because it's still wet 
that means you can still work in it but once it gets dry I can get into this part here and you're going to get sharp edges I don't want sharp edges so I'm happy with that I'm going to put an even darker colour of Prussian blue and that sienna just at the very bottom of these and they'll really contrast these these little bushes at the front that are going to appear in a bit they're going to have some nice light tops and we'll do the same here add some real dark areas while it's still damp while it's still damp you can still work on it once you've once it's dried out that is it you're painting a completely different method then you're painting wet and dry not wet and wet so and down there see that's wet on dry there because it's actually dry so i'm going to just lift the edge of that out because i don't really want that to be like that okay so i'm quite happy with that now here we've got a like a um a, a little very low hedge so i'm going to use some greens here just to highlight what that is i'm not going on a straight line we don't want to do that because it's way too uniform these things have got enough character to them once you start using rulers and putting straight lines in everywhere you, you take away its personality everything needs a personality even a painting bit of dark there and blend that in here Right the way down there. Now, as it gets closer to you, things seem to get darker. Okay, and I'm, going to, I'm not doing a straight line. What I want to do is some little bits and bobsies. There. And see that that was my guideline, but I'm not sticking to it. You don't have to you shouldn't really stick faithfully to those guidelines because they are uh, they're exactly what they are, a guideline. With watercolour, you know, you're allowed to stray a little bit. Just put a couple of extra bits of pigment in different areas and I'll just create points of interest when it begins to dry out. Bit of uh, olive green there. Add, add a bit of burnt sienna, it turns it into like an olive green, it's quite nice. Okay, happy with that. Now then, we have different kinds of greens going on here. We will put a big bush over there. Now then, that bush, as you can see, has got a very straight edge at the top. Now, we want to soften that by putting a little bit of water on there. And we've got to decide which direction the light is heading. Well, I think if we say the light is heading this way, we can create lots of dramatic shadows from this building, carrying you right into there, which is itself going to create mood. 
So let's have the light coming from that direction so the shadows will be on that side there. So let's put it darker at this side. And we'll have over there. soft edge there. There we go. In the distance, my soft edge washes. And now I can just add a couple of bits and bobs into these brushes just to give a point of interest really. Right, that's all right. That was a drag nicely. We've got to put some more detail in there in a bit, so that's just fine. Alright. Let's uh let's give it a dry and come back in a minute. Right now I've just rubbed out the pencil lines at the top there just to see how that's took and it's it's looked very nice actually. But we changed our I mean that was based on the light coming that way but we changed our mind so we have the light going that way so we have to put this part in shadow so we can do that see we can change our minds as we go along so a nice shadow colour I think is ultramarine blue and um, opera rose or rose opera but I'm going to put light I like dusting of it. Let's just see how that goes. I like dusting of this. Down there. I'm kind of just like drawing on, on it, just scribbling on it there. Now I'm going to bring that down with a bit of wet. Just and vanish it off to there. And I think that I've kind of done that trick. Yeah, and I'm going to. A bit of shadow here as well. <laughs> right. That I like. It's just coming down, it's doing the job for us. It's still losing a bit up there, which I like. It still lost itself into the haze and I like that just wipe a little bit of those sharp areas off and I think that's okay there and we use a little bit more down here now to establish that see we're not not following the exact colour of the photograph which is the artist's prerogative and I think to be honest with you I mean it's only my opinion there are other there are other artists that paint basically brick for brick and they're fantastic and make me really put me in awe of them but I personally I prefer something a little bit more a little bit more made up but and then you can get away with stuff then can't you? You can say, oh yeah, it was supposed to be that colour. I'm adding more colour back in now because I, I decided it needed that contrast against the sky. So uh, just pull that down a little bit. Just pull that down. There you go. The painting paints itself and sometimes you have to make choices halfway through and rounding about and think, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that. 
Well, these bushes here need a little bit of depth to them, so I'm going to create a little bit of that's paint grey, there. a little bit of the blue there on this green colour. Right, and let's just see how it works first at the bottom. It's a bit too dark. So, here we go. Just, and what I've done, I've flattened my brush out so it's quite sharp. So the edge is quite pointing there, it's like a, like a knife there. And there, so I've got, I've got some nice pointy bits. I'm not doing every bit. I'm just having some clean water on there. Got some very light areas. This is going to dry lighter as well, so always be mindful of that. It goes about 30% lighter. Got a bit of purple there. Let's have a look at that as well. Just to contrast stuff. And not filling all that area. You don't want to colour it all in because it's pointless doing your first layer. If you're going to do that, first layer is the bit that we see through through these branches there. There we go. And a little bit of this purple. I quite like that purple. Looks nice. So we're going to go. Over there, like this, and drop a few, just a few directional branches there. And I'll stop as we get down to there. Now, now this is I'll make these a little bit more dense now, just add some directional branches here. I can move a little bit closer out of the the picture. There we go. I think we'll leave that there. Now this area here, I think we're gonna indicate these these bushes here just by putting a few just a couple of these little directional branches getting thicker towards the bottom using the very tip of my brush that is very important if you start splodging around then you're going to get nowhere you're going to look at that old eyeball mess so well, there we go just put a little bit of depth underneath these these bushes there all right now then, this part here is it's like sandstone, so I'm going to create a little bit of a sandstone colour by creating a bit of yellow, orange and a bit of burnt sienna. Yeah. Right, now I'm going to wet that colour first, wet that part first, and use my big brush that I used for the sky to re-wet that area I want it to be nice and flowy this okay right let's get that wet now moving to this area all right so I'm leaving little bits of white out in there And as we get closer, I'm going to a little bit more burnt sienna there, just to change that colour up a little bit. All right, just as we get further down, I'm going to add a dark colour to this mixture. A little bit of sepia or brown dark brown, whatever is your flavour of choice. And we'll just round all that off with this here. Up 
ついにやっちゃいそう。うん。あ、あ、やっぱりさ、ロケハンしそう。なんか少なさくなってね。ね、みや。あ、じゃ。Now we have some. Ah, just some put that bits here. Some dark areas underneath. You see? And so it looks like it's been raining. We'll leave that now to dry and I'm going to put some more detail in here. So we use a lovely, lovely sap green in this bag here. And we'll add a little bit of the orange just to give it a point of interest. We want to break these colours up, we don't want them all to be green which they actually are in the scene. But I think that scene needs to be broken up by different shades of green and orange. And a couple of uh, areas of pink around here. I think we'll let that dry now. Welcome back. Well, now we've got, I'm really pleased with this at the moment. I quite like that. Um, but I think what we need to do now is start building in some of these features. Start to get it so it looks like what it's supposed to look like. So, first thing I'm going to do is going to create like a, a middle shadow I call it, like me form shadow so so I know I need to using uh, the tip of my brush so just bits and we're going to just create a part here for the windows And the windows go down to about there. I'm not being too precious with these windows. We're not creating an architect's drawing. Because if the architect saw this, he would go absolutely bonkers. Or she would go absolutely bonkers. here we have window and uh, the window goes to there it goes right away up to there so I'm gonna just indicate this is where my window will be and just wet that part there My window is going to have different shades of darkness and light. And the front of this building has got big pillars. And it's got gaps between the pillows. Pillars? Pillows. All right. um, which I'm going to indicate by just a couple of simple lines. 
for a short while and yeah come down there we've got two pillars in it and we've got a bit of a bit of a light and a bit of shadow in between them there are two pillars there one there and one there there we go that's the only bit of real detail we need to put in there and a window here there's a door actually a window door nothing handy and I just soften that edge up there and soften that up there now then Now, because the light's coming down in grooves, I'm going to state that light catching just there. It's not visible that on my uh, photograph, but I think by doing putting this little these little lines there, it tells that story, which is what we want to do really. And the light is caught there as well. So we'll have that in light area. Okay, let's see how that goes. Let's see how that dries. Right, the next stage is to get a bit of this um, garden on the way. Oh, let's put some little temporary shadows in it. Let's have a look. These characters here gonna have a long shadow and these this building here is gonna have quite a long shadow too. And he's gonna go over there and because it's shadowed there it's gonna be heavily shadowed this side of the hedge. Pull up that shadow there nicely. Okay, so now we're going to put a couple of more little shrubs and what have you. Just by putting little blocks of colouring. That's all we're doing. We're not. We're not trying to copy this because I'd never do it. I'll try to copy that. I'll be there all week. So, you got to remember it's a watercolour. It's supposed to be spontaneous. Right, okay. So, around here. Around some. Jumps of flowers. Yellow, yeah. And we'll have a couple of spots dashing around there. And I'll leave that to dry. Oh no, it's a little bit that we need to do around there. Just a little bit of detail around here first. And that's the part people can have a little walk around there. Let that dry there. In fact, let's let the whole thing dry for a minute. Now for the next bit. We're going to start 
putting more detail in these windows now. So I need to use the same colour, I'm using Payne's Grey, a little bit of French Ultramarine and Opera Rose. And I think a little bit of more Payne's Grey. So a bit on the purpley side that. So no, a bit more water because I don't want it too too thick this. So now then let's have a look, see where we go. Do the under the east first of the buildings. Right. And down the inside of the wall of the window. And now then, we have some, some window there, a bit of window there, window there, window there, gap with a window at the bottom. And we're going to do the same for this one now. Okay, what the rear scene inside of that window door there so we're gonna just go all the way through right the way down a bit of window there okay now looks like we're just doing great big chunks of window isn't it but we're not we're gonna go into there in a bit Bit more detail on there, and let's just lighten this now. Now then, on this part here, we've got it's a little bit lighter at this, this part of the building, so we have to put a little bit more detail in here. So we have got we have got three of these windows to deal with so there's one two and three and we do the same there one there one there Oh, these windows go right away down, I've just noticed. Now, I don't want those to be too precise, so I'm just going to get a bit of water and just splodge on that a bit. Seems a bit counterintuitive, but I think it'll work. Now, this part here, we're going to... Just add a little bit of detail in here. Mm -hmm. I'm just picking out little details now. Just teach you little details. So it don't look too purpley. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to this. Right, so we'll just have a little bit of a little bit of sienna colour in different places down there. Just under there. Bom, bom, bom. And a 
I'm going to put some big. I'm going to make a statement here of. I've got a bit of brickwork going on there. As you can see, I'm not putting every brick in, I'm just touching up where brickwork should be. That's it, that's all it really needs. If you don't need it, don't put it in. There you go. Uh, some cobbled things there. Right, let's leave that to dry. Now then, our bench here is going to be quite a contrasting colour to that, so we're going to make that a little bit on the orangey side. And mix that colour up a little bit. that's all it really needed we didn't to, I need to put all the details in to know that it was a bench it's a bench now these people here that's a mixture of upper rows and a bit of this orange yellow colour let's just put some faces just a little blob there for that person's face and that one that one's linking that other one's got so this is a lady now, she's got showing her bare legs and he is a little bit more covered up and oh, we need we need some hands. And we need hands to hold your little baby. Right, okay. And on this part here, let's start messing about with this with this green. Right, let's create a bit of olive green. So we need this sap green there. A bit of that green there. And a little bit of burnt sienna. A bit more. And that creates like a, a nice olive green. Now we can use that olive green to add the detail in here. Alright, so. round that that uh, hedge off a little bit there with just a couple of little bits of details here let's pass a few of them around there yeah. <laughs> and now this purple a bit of a shadow there around there and some detail over here and we'll have some more detail there. And we've got some poles here, so I'm going to put some poles in. Whoa, I slipped them, didn't I? There we go. I'll work it in. Just put a little spook on there. And on there. One up on there. Now these poles will have big long shadows. And that one will have a shadow over there. At this stage now it's all about the shadowing. Now let's go back to these windows. Darker colour. Well, so I'm using a bit of this. I think it's. I think there's a bit of Van Dyke brown in there and a bit of um, sepia or bitumen. <coughs> so on these parts here, I'm going to have some windows. So I'm indicating these window panes in now. And the same with this. 
Quick up. Just indicating it. Just indicating these windows. Top part there. Make it a little bit darker. Top part there. And down this part here. Right now this cat these needs to have some he's having some darker trousers because he's quite posh and he's been having his breakfast in his morning suit. So this bench has got a little gaps in it there. We're going to go around there. We'll just put a bit of detail in where this bench is now. Up there. Now I'm going to put. I'm going to put a nice outfit on this lady. An orange outfit, if you please. And she has got a bit of a. Bluey outfit on. There we go. And we have some lights over this. So uh, so I'll put a couple of little Okay. And put some bulbs there. Intensify that shadow. I'm going to create some little stones there. There you go. And we're going to say that is about it. So thank you for watching. It, following is the finished picture. Thank you.